all right so let's continue so now we need to work on the functionality side of the home page and the very first thing that we need to do is we need to create a state for the input field that we have over here so let's do that so let's first import the use state hook from react as that's what we are going to use in order to create the state so the use state hook it takes a default value and for that we can set it to be an empty string and it returns back an array where the first element is the state and we can name it as word and the second element is the function which is used to mutate or to update the state so we can name it as set word and we are using the ASX way of destructuring that array which is returned when we invoke the use state hook so this is the first element and this is the second one so let's bind the state with the field input by passing in the value prop and setting the value to be your word and at the same time we also need to pass in the on change which is a function which is triggered whenever the user whenever user enters anything on this input field so we need to extract the new value and we can do that as this function is called with the default event object out of which we can extract the value so let's actually pass in a function and with the first argument is the default event object and we need to update the state using the set word function that we have over here and we need to call it with event dot target dot value as this is the value which the user entered or to say it's the new value of the input field so if we do that and if we take a look we should be able to type something over here as you can see and at the same time for the moment let me just log the state to the console so if I enter something over here and if we take a look as you can see there we have the state so now that we have the value we have the value or to say we have the word which the user entered we need to push the user to a different screen the one that we created over here the definition one when the user presses enter or when they click on the enter key which is displayed if they're on the like on a smartphone or something like that so in order to listen to that enter or to say the submit event what we can do is we need to wrap it up the field input inside of a form the html form element and for that we can actually do it right over here let's wrap it up inside of a form and on this form we need to pass in the on submit so this on submit will be called when the user presses enter when they are on this field like when the field is focused so let's actually create a function and we can name it as handle submit over here let's create the function handle submit and for the time being let's log something like search word something like this so if we save it and if we take a look let me just open the console as well so if I press enter at this point we will notice that it does logs the message to the console for a split second as you will notice if I just do it again oops if I enter something and if I press enter you will see that it was there for a split second but then it refreshed the entire thing so the thing is when we use the form in such a way the normal behavior of this form element is that when the on submit happens traditionally this form thing it used to submit well it it still does but in our case that's not the thing that we intend to have so it submits the request to a different endpoint and for that that thing to work it causes a refresh so that's the default behavior of the form element and as we are going to handle the the action or to say the making of request 
asynchronously which means that we won't be pushing the user to a we won't be pushing the request to a different route or to say to different endpoint so in this case what we can do is on this function we can get like we get the default event object and on this event object there is a function which is the prevent default so if we just call this thing it makes sure that whatever the default nature is it just prevents that to to happen so if we just do this thing we will notice that now it's no longer going to refresh the screen and we're going to log that message we're going to see that right over here as you can see so that's perfect so now we just need to push to the push the user to the respective screen which is this thing this path but before that we can actually do a bit of error checking like in order to make sure that whatever value that the user entered it's in the right format so over here the first thing that we can do is let's create a variable and we can name it as trimmed word so we will be taking the word which is within the state and we are going to call the trim method so the way it works is that it's going to remove the extra spacing that there may be like in this case if there is any extra spacing in the beginning or in the end it's going to trim it out and make it work as such so that's the first thing that we need to do after we do this we need to check the length of the word that the user entered so there has to be some sort of length like for instance if i actually one second so if it's an empty string and if we coerce the value in a reverse form it returns back true so that's what we need to check that if the trimmed word if this thing turns out to be true in that case we no longer want to proceed with the like pushing the user to the to the respective screen because that won't make any sense and the other thing is as we want the user to enter only a single word we don't want them to have any sort of spacing like as such this won't be a word and that's what that's not something that we want so in order to prevent this case we can kind of do the check by like for instance if we have something like this we can split up the string value in spaces and this will return back an array after it splits the entire thing into the into different parts based upon the value that we provide over here so this space is going to match it up over here and it's going to split these two like this string that we have into two parts as you can see so we need to do the same thing and we need to check the length of it as it is supposed to be equals to one however as we want the true case so what we can do is we can just set it to be that if this thing equals if this thing is greater than one in that case we is going to return back true and if that's the case we want to return from the function so over here we can do the same thing trimmed word split it up in a space and if the length of it is more than one then we no longer want to proceed with the request so that's perfect and after these two checks we are sure that whatever value that the user entered it's a valid one although we can do a bit of extra checking such as we can check whether the value which the user entered it doesn't have a number as that won't make any sense but i will leave that thing for now like even if the user entered an invalid value it won't return back any valid response from the api that we are going to call we are going to make the request to so we are going to handle the invalid value any case so doesn't matter anyway now we need to push the user to the respective screen so for that let's import a hook from the use sorry from the react router dom package this thing and the name of the hook is use history so this hook when invoked this thing when invoked it returns back the history instance and on this history we have a method called push this thing so we need to provide the path and it's going to push the user to that specific path 
so over here we can call the history dot push and using the back ticks because the value of the word that we need to enter it is a dynamic one the state value so let me actually copy this thing oops over here let's enter the same thing and instead of the word in such a way let's use the template literal and let's place in the word in such a way so if we do that and if we take a look let's test it out so if i just press enter without submitting any value will that worked uh, one second that shouldn't happen seems like well actually it has to be the or statement not this thing so if it is if the user entered nothing in that case this would be true if the user entered more than one word then this would this would be true and if either one of them is true we want to return from the function so if we do that and if we take a look let me just enter again as you can see it, it's it has been fixed and if i enter a word like if i enter something which is more than more than one word this won't work however if i enter something which is a one word value as you can see it has pushed the user to the respective path as that's what we have over here so that's perfect i think that that would be it in terms of functionality on this screen and now whoops now we just need to work on this screen which is the definition one so we will be extracting the word which the user entered and we're going to make the request to the api in order to fetch the meaning the pronunciation and all the other stuff about that word so let's do that in the next video.